Hey, Mark Zavon here with Fred at Americana. We're checking out a really cool 1962 Gibson SG. It's actually a Les Paul Jr. because uh, for a limited number of years, they issued this as a Les Paul. Back in uh, the late 50s, the Les Pauls, believe it or not, were not very popular. And so what they did was they switched the shape to this shape, the SG with the double horns, and uh, put the Les Paul name on it, which Les Paul himself was none too happy about, but and later got them to change it back. That's a long story. But at the end of the day, for those three years, this was a Les Paul, Les Paul Jr. And uh, it's an iconic shape. It's a great shape. Tons of people play it. Obviously, you know, people, everybody knows. <laughs> You know, everybody from, uh, I mean, there's tons of guys that play this shape. I mean, it's just a, a timeless, classic shape. This one, it's really light. It's only 6.6 .6 pounds. Neck profile is medium to thick. So it's kind of medium up here and gets a little thicker up here. It's not really a big change, truthfully. And it's kind of a fast neck. Feels really good, you know. It's like... Uh, and it's had a little bit of cool, you know, where somebody actually played this guitar. It's got a vibe like it's actually been a player, a tool in someone's toolbox, which is a good thing. You know, it kind of resonates. It's got that resonance that you get from those type of guitars. But uh, got a very hot P90 pickup. Uh, 8.76K is what this thing is metered at. 22 jumbo frets up to here, so you can get all the way up to your E. If you want to get up there. Still called a Les Paul, obviously, because of the reasons we talked about before, but uh, the other thing it has is this cool factory maestro vibrola. It's a, it's a tremolo arm. It's, it's a wraparound style, you know, but it was a factory wraparound vibrola tremolo, and uh, it's got a cool vibe. You're not going to do any dive bombs with it, but it's really cool. You know, it's definitely got the cool vibe to it. And the other thing that it's got that's interesting is, uh, and this might be one of the first years they did this, it has a, a compensated saddle set up, up on top of this part of the bridge. So it used to just be like a steel bar, but this thing actually has compensated saddles. I don't know if you can get a good look at that, but, uh, and then, you know, makes direct contact here. And then back here, there's a couple of set screws that you can actually adjust, you know, back and forth to kind of get the intonation just right, you know, or just as, about as just right as you can get but a lot better than you could with just a steel bar. So they were making strides in that direction. It's not a cinematic, but they were definitely headed that way with this. So thing's an amazing guitar. It sounds great. It's in great condition. Look at the back of it. Just look at it. Wood grain for days. It's amazing. But uh, a great looking guitar, a great playing guitar. One of the most evil riffs of all time. stands before me yeah so it's great songs great riffs a great guitar uh tons of cool stuff you know like uh Yeah, that's a that's a good song. Great song. Great. This, this guitar is amazing. Yeah, 
lot of a lot of cool sound. <laughs> Yeah, this this guitar I play SGs actually. A lot of my guitars are SGs because I really love the shape. And but the difference there's a big difference playing a vintage guitar like this one and uh, and a modern one. You know, this one's got a little bit more character. It doesn't want to necessarily. Uh, it's not really made to to be like a speed demon or or one of those things. It's kind of a a juicy vintage kind of gut wrenching kind of a tone that comes out of it, especially with the P P90 because the P90 has got like this fat single coil mid-range thing, this character that comes out of it that's uh, different than a humbucker, you know? I mean, like T Tony Iommi played all the humbucker uh, SG stuff and, uh, you know, these were used to, to great effect with, you know, a lot of different bands, but uh, there's a big difference, man, because some of these are just more intended to be kind of a light gain, not really over-the-top shred machines, you know? They're, they're sort of, you know, like uh, Leslie West played one with Mountain, you know? And it has that tone. You can hear that tone, the mid-range of that, you know, cutting through that it does. You know, it's, it's special. So, you know, these guitars, they've really got a, a place all their own. You know, it's got a, a kind of a... I don't know what it is, man, but it's a it's like a mid-range character that just cuts right through. So definitely a cool guitar. And they were used by lots of guys. I mean, there's stuff that's like uh here, let's switch it over a little bit. I was playing through the Friedman there. We're gonna switch over to the 61 Oxblood Grill Super. Highly desirable amp, let me tell you. It's amazing. <laughs> first moved to Los Angeles, I had an Ibanez, it was, uh, it was a 550, you know, one of them speed machines everybody was playing back in the mid-90s and whatever, and uh, it was a great guitar, I still have it, it's great, it's got a Floyd, you know, some EMGs in it, it's great, but when I would go to open jams in LA, nobody had any respect for a guy with an Ibanez and a Floyd Rose. They would give me the hairy eyeball the minute I got up on stage. And so I was like, what's going on with all of this? I just don't understand it, right? So, because I was playing the songs, I was keeping it between the ditches and whatnot. Anyway, long story short, I got hired to play in a Black Sabbath tribute band. I went down to Guitar Center and I bought myself a $140 Epiphone SG and put a sticker over the headstock so nobody could tell it wasn't a Gibson. 
Started playing that at the open jams, and all of a sudden, the doors started opening, and people were smiling and nodding their heads at me, and it was all because I was playing one of these. And that's why it's so cool. You know what I mean? So keep that in mind. I'm Mark Zavon, Fred Americana. We'll catch you next time.